if you are using NAD Framework Core, at some point you're going to run into a database exception and figuring out what caused this exception can be a real headache. So in this video, I'm going to show you a library that's going to make database exceptions developer friendly and much easier to handle. I have a simple command handler for creating a new customer and persisting it in the database. And I also have a unique constraint on the customer email so there can't ever be two customers with the same email. Now to enforce this constraint, currently I have a create customer command validator which performs an eager check in the database before handling the command to make sure that the email is unique. This kind of check is pessimistic and it comes at the cost of an extra database request every time I want to create a new customer. So let's try to consider what an optimistic approach could look like by turning off this validation. So I'm actually going to go to my endpoint, which is where I'm triggering this validation and I'm going to comment this out. So right now our validator won't be invoked, but we still have a fail safe at the database level if I take a look at my customer configuration, which is my fluent configuration for NED framework on the customer entity, I have this line here specifying that the email column or property in my model has a unique index. This will introduce a unique constraint at the database level and it's also thread safe. So if there is a race condition, only one transaction will be able to commit the changes to the database and I can guarantee that the email is always going to be unique. So if I have the uniqueness guarantee at the database level, do I even need to perform the check in the handler? The main reason for performing an eager database check is so that I can fail before starting my command and return some sort of user-friendly response, but I can achieve the same behavior even with an optimistic scenario. So here's how that would look like. I'm going to add a try catch statement around my handle method and I'm going to move my code inside of the try statement. In the catch statement, I'm going to be catching a DB update exception. This exception is specific to EF core. So let's inject an iLogger instance and we're going to scope it to our command handler. So iLogger of create customer command handler. And I'm just going to use this logger to log the exception message in the console before throwing it to be handled in our upper layers of the application. So logger, log error, and let's just pass it the exception message and the exception itself. This is how the optimistic scenario would look like. We don't have an extra request to the database to check the email uniqueness but we are relying on the unique constraint on the index that we have on the email column to enforce this constraint for us. So we're only going to be calling the database once in the save changes call to insert the customer into the database. And we're handling a database exception to see if the email is a duplicate and figure out what response we want to return. So let's check out how this is actually working. I'm going to send a post request to the API and I already have a record in the database with this email and I expect to get back an exception. Because I don't have a global exception handler in place, the exception itself is propagated to my response and I can see I'm getting a database update exception which is wrapping some generic Postgres exception because I'm using PostgreSQL as my database but the key part is this here. So some sort of error code saying the duplicate key violates the unique constraint that I have on the customer's email index. The unique constraint at the database level is working perfectly, but how you handle this exception properly? We could try to copy, let's say, this specific part of the exception and in the catch statement, try to match this message to the message that we get in the database update exception. So if the message contains part of this string, then we have violated our unique constraint. And the only thing that could have caused this is the email column. The problem is handling your exceptions like this is really cumbersome and you're going to end up with a mess. And the database update exception can be thrown for multiple reasons, not just a unique constraint. 
if I go back to my customer configuration, I also have maximum length constraints on the name and the email. So that could also be the cause of the database update exception. So there's a library out there that makes all of this much easier. And I'm going to add it to our application project. The library is called NED Framework Exceptions. We want to install the specific library for the database that we are using. And I'm using PostgreSQL. So I'm going to install this library, which is the NED Framework Core Exceptions PostgreSQL. What this library does is it handles the database update exception and gives you access to a more specific exception, letting you handle it accordingly. This library comes with an interceptor that handles the DB update exception and wraps it in a more specific exception. So to enable this, I'm going to head over to the persistence project where I'm configuring my database context. And I just need to call the use exception processor method, which is exposed by the library that I just installed. And now I can head over to my command handler and instead of catching the database update exception, I can catch the unique constraint exception. Now there's no need to check the contents of the message because I know that the unique constraint exception is caused by the request email and I can handle it accordingly and decide which kind of response I want to return from the handle method. For example, I could decide to convert this into an email is not unique exception which I'll handle at the endpoint level and return the appropriate error message to the caller. Or I could refactor the handle method to return a result object, which would contain the appropriate error message. If I head over to the source code of the unique constraint exception, you're going to see the other exceptions that are available inside of this library. So there's the unique constraint exception, but there's also the cannot insert null exception, which is when you're trying to insert null into some column and that is not supported at the database level. So this happens more often than you think. Then there's the max length exceeded exception. This one would be thrown if we exceed the maximum length that we set, for example, on the name or the email columns. Then there is the numeric overflow exception and also the reference constraint exception. This one would be thrown if you try to set a foreign key value for a record that doesn't exist. Optimistic validation can save you a few database requests, but it comes at the cost of much more verbose exception handling. I still prefer just calling the database directly and running the validations that I need to. This will be much easier to maintain and evolve over time. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay awesome.